Hello and welcome back to Spark Soul Therapy. Um, this is Gail and it's good to be on today. Um, I have, so I'm starting like kind of a new series on the channel um, and it's just conversations with women um, about faith, about their religious path, about you know, um, things that matter to all of us. So I have my dear friend and colleague, Valena Escavaria, and um, she is was the first person willing to come on and share and talk with us today. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to you. Um, you know, I think this is just really important for all of us to share. I think we have a lot more um, in common than we do different. And, you know, that seems to be a struggle for all of us right now. And uh, so, you know, the more we can share and, and talk to each other and, and, you know, share experiences, I think it's just, you know, a good thing for all of us. So Melina was so willing, was willing to come on today. So I'm, I'm grateful to her. Um, so this is just going to be a series of conversations um, that focus on different, you know, religious paths, spiritual paths. Um, you know, it's kind of meant to just share our human experience of our heart, of our community, of love, of, you know, just expressions of ourselves. So um, I'm going to ask, you know, Melaine is just going to answer some questions and I'm, I'm going to ask everybody that follows in this series the same questions so that we can kind of see, you know, again, that, that we have a lot to share with each other. So are you ready, Melaine? <laughs> Thank you again. This is awesome. So, Thank you for having me. oh my gosh, you're welcome. Okay, so the first question I want to ask, um, so tell us a little bit about your religious path. Um, for someone who doesn't know, would never have know anything about you, um, you know, just kind of give us a picture of, of what that is for you. Okay, so I am a Muslim, uh, a Sunni Muslim. There are two, I would say, two major sects of Islam, which is the religion that I follow. Um, and Sunni just means that you follow what we call the Sunnah, which means you follow the teachings and the practices of our Prophet, peace be upon him. Um, and Islam, um, Islam's meaning is just the submission to God. Okay. That's all Islam means. Um, and so I also practice a path called Tasawuf, which is something that focuses a bit more on connecting your soul to the creator. Wow, that's beautiful. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Like explain, um, yeah, just. Yeah, sure. Um, so um, there, are, there are some people who don't really dive too deeply into this particular path. Um, mm -hmm. There have been some misconceptions about it, um, things that, you know, have gone askew, um, but uh, for us, it's really focusing on creating your soul to the creator, not creating, I'm sorry, <laughs> connecting your soul to the creator and doing things that are going to help you get there. Um, uh, that can mean being very humble about the way that you live, um, helping others in any way that you can, um, and just um, practicing your daily life to be as close to God as possible, knowing that um, I can never achieve the level of God, but that I want to do everything I can to be connected. Wow, that is beautiful. Wow. Yeah, I do, this is learning for me. I don't, you know, like it, it, like the specific terms and things. I mean, that's, and, and yeah, that's so beautiful. So how long have you, have you were you born and raised? No, um, so I was actually raised Christian. Um, I, well, Catholic for a little bit and then Protestant for a little bit longer. Um, and then around the age of 20, I left religion behind, basically. Um, I was getting divorced and I had met my spouse in the church and had just kind of turned my back on everything. You know, I felt like, I felt like everything was just going wrong. And so I blame God, I guess you could say. Um, and I around the age of 25, I decided to start looking again. I felt like, you know, you you weren't paying attention the way you should have been or you're missing something. You, you know, 
go out and look for it. You know, I knew that I wasn't happy and I knew that I felt alone. Um, so I got a lot of books and I went to the library and I looked at a whole bunch of articles online and I looked at um, Protestantism the way that my mom practices it. I looked at Catholicism the way that my grandparents practice, um, Judaism, Hinduism, Sikhism. Um, I went into Buddhism and then even Satanism to really get like a really broad view of things. Yes. Um, and I left Islam for last because I didn't really know anything about it. What I did know was what the TV told me, which wasn't always very good news. Right. Um, and so I left Islam for last thinking like, there's just no way, like you'll flip through the book and you know, you'll be done with it. Um, and I ended up finding my religion instead. Wow, that is incredible. And you know what? We share a lot of a path similar. I mean, I was raised Christian as well. And just, um, I guess, due to a lot of the politics and the, you know, abuse of, that we all learn about and, you know, is that everything? No, but, you know, I just hit this point where it just, you know, it wasn't right for me anymore. Mm -hmm. And I stepped back as well. And I did, I searched and I, you know, I practiced Buddhism for 10 years and I, but you know what I love about your story and, and my story too, I guess, is that there's always this calling to connect with God. Yes. Like there's still this calling and what does that, you know, how do you come back to that, I guess. And I think that's a huge part of what this, you know, what this is, is how, how are, how are women doing that? And, and, you know, what's meaningful about it and, and, you know, um, you know, just, I could sense that about you that it's it's that important and some people just practice forever whatever faith they are and it doesn't really matter there's a lot of going through the motions and just doing what you do but what i'm more interested in is this conversation like it's amazing to me that's so cool Thank that's you. really wow what a journey so then you just found it and you were like oh my gosh this is it right basically yes um i had was very sure that after I closed the book on Satanism, I'm like, I'm going to open this book on Islam and I'm going to look at the articles. And I had already decided, like, I'm basically, I'm going to prove now to myself that there's no God, there's nothing wow. there. And I did the searching for nothing and I am alone. Right. And I opened the book and I looked at the articles and I was like, yes, like <laughs> this resonates with me. Like this makes so much sense. I've been missing this for so long and I had no idea um and i knew that there had there had to be something because i was more or less an atheist for about five years prior to looking again and i knew every time i was afraid every time i was anxious or if i lost something immediate my brain would go right to ask god ask for help yes, like, yes. after telling people oh i don't believe in god like god isn't real and then ask god ask for help because that was where my brain knew to go. Right. We know it's there. It's just right. finding that connection, you know, and, and you know, I, I love the journey of us currently in the world. Like, you know, we have the, the opportunity to find that connection where we find it. And that's one thing about this series is if there's not going to be, you know, there's going to be a lot of different people on here and there is no judgment. God is God. And, right. you know, Absolutely. it's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Who gives me the goosebumps? <laughs> um, okay. So what has your faith taught you about being a human being on this planet? So that's a pretty big question. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> a lot of these are really big, so feel free to go at it however you go at it. <laughs> so I definitely feel like I, I had a conversation with um, my sisters the other day about how the planet that we live on now is not the planet we grew up on. Um, right. Things are so fast changing. Um, and I really value that about my faith that I feel like the teachings that I have gotten are all timeless. Um, yes. When we think about um, the acts of servitude, um, my, um, my religious book has, uh, the, the Quran has uh, sections about how to properly care for orphans, about how to properly care for your parents, for your siblings. Um, 
And I think God has taught me a lot. Um, we have five pillars in my religion. Um, and one of them is charity and knowing that that's a huge part. It's a foundation of my religion is giving and making sure that others are doing well. And um, I mean, we don't even, we, we shouldn't practice taxes even like, you know, making sure that people are being cared for the way that they're supposed to be cared for. Right. Um, and I really feel like that, that has taught me how to care about the world, knowing that um, anything I have is on loan. So right. somebody on the street could ask me for a dollar, even if it's my last dollar. I mean, it's not mine. It's God lent it to me and he lent it to me because it was for you. And that's, I feel like I've gotten that from my religion. That is beautiful. Thank you. Yes. That, yeah. And, and it's so funny when we talk, I know there's so many, you know, we, we have such um, angst in the world and people have fought over religion for so many thousands of years, but when it comes down, back to that path like if you're called to follow a path of of love and 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 you know religion it's it's like we're there's so much of it that's all the same and it, mm -hmm. it always shocks me you know that how it falls apart when you put us all together right right but yeah that's awesome okay um so what has your spiritual path taught you about love and you mentioned just talked about a lot of this um and just understanding giving and receiving love which you, one of the pillars i'm sure they all touch on it um but what else do, yeah would you like so to add for me um again i, I uh, said that i um identify as a sunni muslim so uh, following the Sunnah, we follow the teachings and the life of our Prophet, peace be upon him. And to us, that can look like reading about what uh, his life was like, the things that he incorporated into his day. And um, I know that when I first converted, um, I was a little nervous because, again, social media or the news had told me like, oh, the Prophet Muhammad is like um, a business prophet. Like, you know, everything was a business transaction and, you know, there was no softness there. And I remember because I grew up in the church reading and knowing that, well, Jesus always talked about love and like, how could that be? And so in my religion, we we believe in Jesus. We believe that Jesus was a prophet. And so like we we know the stories of Jesus's life and I have a, uh, a, I have a very good friend who had taught me a lot that I know about the prophet now. Um, and just him telling me about like, oh, well, the prophet always made sure to um, help his wife with the daily chores. And he, um, he prayed with the children. So like uh, his grandchildren, um, our prayers are very... Um, they're very scheduled and so uh, mm -hmm. we have a lot of the same movements um okay you know where we start standing up straight and then we're bent this way and then you're on your knees and your head is to the floor and the prophet would hold his grandson while he did so and like it was a joy to him to have that um and so i definitely look at the life of the prophet to see what love should look like and the prophet was ever giving um people would come to the prophet and ask questions about you know um, who should I love the most? And the prophet would tell the person over and over again, your mother. Love your mother over and over again. I mean, the prophet came during a time when um, people were burying their daughters because they wanted sons. And the prophet told stories about how beautiful it is to have daughters and how important it is to have daughters and how um, how paradise is at the feet of your mother because love is all over you know these are things right. that people should have and like um i definitely feel like i i learned to accept love in the way that it is going to be given i know that not everybody loves the same way but mm -hmm. i do also know that love can look a bunch of different ways just based off of my own religion right Yes, I love that. Love can look look a bunch of different ways. That is, yeah, for sure. And just, yeah, seeing that in one another and accepting that. 
Mm-hmm. Yes, right. that's beautiful. So what are your favorite um, traditions in your faith? Like what ones stand out to you? Um, what are the most beautiful traditions or, or practices? So for me, one of our traditions that I love is my scarf. Mm-hmm. Um, so when we talk about hijab, it's not just your scarf, it is the um, the way that you speak, the way that you act, the way that you carry yourself. Um, and it's something that I was actually really fearful of when I first converted. I was like, there's no way I'm wearing that. Like that's, that's too much, too far. Um, and I remember having a moment a little while after I converted, it was probably like only a week in. And I was already feeling very sad knowing that you know, my whole entire life, I come from a very um, collectivist community. I'm I'm Mexican American, mm-hmm. um, and I know that my entire life, I've always been able to go to an aunt, to my mother, to my grandmother, and be able to ask questions. You know, um, whether it be about religion or about life, and I just felt like I'm doing this alone. You know, I converted, and I have no one to ask. I have no one to show me if I were to wear it, how to wear it, um, and I didn't know what to do. Um, and I started watching some videos and looking at you know different pictures of women, and I thought how beautiful it is that I can connect myself to the women that came before me just by wearing a scarf, that I am visibly Muslim just the way that they were. And even if I never get to meet them or if they have passed a long time ago, this piece of cloth connects us. And that was my, my way of finding relationship with people knowing that I'm not doing this alone. I have all of these women who came before me and we are in the same line. Wow. That's amazing. I love that. That is, it's just so special. And, and, you know, the piece about connecting the women, cause that is for the women, you know, and it's, it's, um, you know, that's, you know, that whole ancestral piece and, and, you know, all the people that have come before us and wow, that's beautiful. Are there any other traditions that you love? We have a lot of traditions. Um, (laughs) um, I recently learned about a tradition that um, I'm very interested in. Um, We're encouraged to read the Quran um, daily, as often as possible. Um, There are many, many people who have the entire book memorized, which I think is incredible. Wow. Um, Oh, my goodness. It's huge. I'm remembering my name half the time. (laughs) So I I give them all the credit. Um, But I um, was able to implement something to help me read more often. And I had been really excited telling a friend of mine, like, hey, I'm getting further into the book than I've ever gotten before. And they told me that there's a tradition where once you complete it, you bring sweets to your neighbors as like a celebration. Like, look, look what I completed. I did it. Um, wow. And I love to bake. <laughs> so you I thought, do, you are an amazing baker and cook. Oh my you. goodness. Thank oh. You. So I was so excited thinking like, what a wonderful way to grab that community again. I mean, I have neighbors across the street who, yes. um, when I first converted, were very excited and you know wanted to talk about it as they're they're Muslim as well. And so I I love that tradition, the idea that I get to share this with yes. other people because had I not been able to or had this not been told to me, it would have felt like another thing I was doing alone. And it's right. not something I can share and I can have community and I really love that. Wow, I love it. it's like built in, right? That's so <laughs> awesome. I mean, you know, they're they're you know, uh, uh, it's so important with with any faith that community is built in and connection right. is built in to Absolutely. to you know not just God but but to to neighbors and family and wow that's so awesome yay I love that you had the neighbors and you're like hey I'm coming over <laughs> that's so awesome <laughs> and I love it's so special that you like had that support. Because yes. you could feel really alone, you know. Right. Yeah. Wow. It's really wonderful. Wow. 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 I love it. So, um, how has your uh, faith helped you be a better woman? 
And I know you've just talked about some of that, but uh, what <laughs> right. do you think? Yeah, so, if you run out I know some of these overlap just a bit. <laughs> so I, um, I did some history digging before. I've taken a few classes before about what the world was like when um when the quran was revealed when islam was spread um the quran gave women rights before rights were given in the west so wow. when the quran was revealed we were allowed to um to keep our name after getting married to own land to marry whom we chose uh to make our own money we I know there are certain cultures um, that take part in like a dowry. So, you know, your parents are given, whether that be livestock or money or what have you, and then you, you get married. In my religion, that money goes to the wife. I'm shown with this money that my spouse can take care of me. He can provide for me. And those are things that Islam gave me. So I bet to, a lot of people that are not Muslim do not know that. I bet I, I would no. be surprised if they did. Yeah, wow. it, I don't think I don't think it's very very well known among like non-Muslims. Um, but for me, seeing these things and even um, even seeing uh, I know we like when we talk about Roe v. Wade. I know that's a, a really hot button. Yes, issue. I was just gonna say, how do you view like the <laughs> rights that are being taken? Like right. we're all absolutely stunned and shocked. Right. And so in my religion, it is permissible for a woman to have an abortion. There are certain um, situations where, you know, it can happen if the mother isn't mentally stable to have and raise a child, she's allowed to have an abortion. If the mother's life is in jeopardy, she's allowed to have an abortion. The idea is protecting that mother's life, knowing that she has a spouse, she may have other children, she may have other people to take care of. She already has the responsibility of life. Right. And that, that is possibility for her. So to know these things about my religion really helps me when wanting to speak up for other women and speak up for their rights. Wow. Um, our religion is really big on calling for justice. Um, we have, uh, kind of an assembly line of things you can do. Like if you can speak up, speak up. If you can talk to someone, talk to someone. If you know anything that you can do, you should do. And so knowing what my rights are right. is really big in helping me want to make sure that other women know what their rights are and that they're being taken care of the way that they're supposed to and that they're able to do what they're supposed to. I mean, the, the very first university was started by a Muslim woman. Wow. So I think there, are, I I understand the different uh, misconceptions uh, when we talk about um, things that are happening in Muslim countries, and those things that take away the rights of women are not actually my religion. They're mm -hmm. culture, and so those cultures are incorrect, and they're not giving to women what women are owed uh, in by way of their rights, but. So I understand why people would be, why people would misunderstand or not see my religion clearly because of what right. they've seen. Wow, that's incredible. I, yeah, it's beautiful, and and it's such a struggle. Like, you know, uh, all the different faiths and and just you know how governments get involved and and cultures get involved and. Right. And, you know, here in the United States, the way we are struggling for women's rights right now and how horribly mistreated, you know, way too many women are and, and you know, taking away the, the rights of, of domestic violence survivors and just hacking and cutting at women's rights is just, Absolutely. it's it's amazing. It's, it's overwhelming. It really is. Yeah. Um, so... Let's see, um, how does your path, so can you share anything, is there anything, any kind of um, um, piece of your, anything you'd kind of like to, to share about um, kind of uh, what, what you think is a misperception or, and I know there's probably a lot of things, but you know, things that, um, 
people, you know, have, have people have shared that have been negative or, you know, things you'd like to share that you've experienced about kind of mis misconceptions about your faith? Sure. Yeah. Um, even as recent as last week, I know there were there was a bullying incident at a high school um, near our area, actually. Um, I think it was in Glendale Heights, okay. um, where they, uh, a hijabi Muslim student was attacked and they tried to rip her scarf off of her head. Um, I know that that has happened to many, many, many Muslim women. Um, I've had it happen to me and it's quite terrifying to be honest with you. Um, that has happened to There are some people who believe that they're helping you. Um, I don't know about that situation in that high school, but I know that there are people who believe that they're helping you. Like, I'm freeing you. You can take it off. You're in America now. Like, it's okay. You wow. don't have to wear that. Um, and I think that's a misconception. Are there people who are forced to wear it? Absolutely. There are people who are forced to wear lots of things all over the world in all different societies. Um, but my religion teaches that there's no compulsion in religion. Yes, there are things set out that I should be doing. I should follow the five pillars. I should pray. I should fast. I should give to charity. I should do pilgrimage if I'm able. I should help the poor. I should honor my parents. But there's no compulsion. I don't have, you can't force me to do anything and it be legal um, within the rules of my religion. Um, and I think that that's a very common misconception that I wear it because I have to. I fought to wear my scarf. I Wow. Again, I, I come from a Christian family, and so this was not an easy topic yes. for my family. Um, I used to uh, keep all of my scarves in my car, and I'd leave the house, put one on, go do what I needed to do, come back and take it off before anybody saw me, because it just wasn't something I could have in my day-to-day -day life the way that I do now. So, right. you know, I... I fought for this, this is mine. And there wow. are women all over the world who have fought to wear their scarf. I mean, women in France are being told that they can't wear it legally. Right. I mean, it's, it's everywhere, so. Yes, I saw that, that as been, well. Yes, that's been, I yes. I would like to put away, put to rest <laughs> that, yeah. you know, that this does not mean oppression. You know, this means right. my choice and that my, the, the beauty standards that the world puts on us don't matter to me because this means it's not for you. You know, you can have a conversation with me. You can get to know me. I am more than what you see in front of you. And if anything, this just points me out as a Muslim. I'm obviously physically a Muslim. And so if you are looking for a Muslim, here I am. <laughs> yeah, I love that. So how long, and you don't have to, you know, um, how long did it take before, like, how did, how was it with your family? Like, how, how did that, what did that look like? It took about six years for everyone to settle down about it. Uh -huh. um, this, I mean, I, uh, Muslims, we have our own holidays, mm -hmm. but we're right. not encouraged to separate from our families. I mean, you should keep your family ties, your family bonds. Um, which is really important, again, coming from a collectivist culture, that, that's important to me. Um, so I still participate when my family has gatherings and get-togethers for holidays. And it was actually this past holiday season that my family put extra, extra effort into making sure that things that typically have pork didn't have pork so that I could participate. Wow. In yeah, I can Yay. eat with them, which was really special to me. It really meant a lot to me. Um, so yeah, it took about six years for everybody to settle down and, and see things differently. Um, I think for me though, <laughs> my most important um, connection was my grandmother. Um, she is by far one of the most incredible women I have ever met in my life, if not the. Um, and I had told her first when I first converted, so like six years ago, I brought it up to her. And um, she was my first person to tell because I thought, okay, well, my mom is your daughter. So if if I'm gonna tell her and I'm nervous about it, you're gonna have to handle it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> you handle your child. <laughs> like, <laughs> 
so I had told my grandmother and um, I was like, don't tell anybody yet. Like, I will call you ahead of time and let you know when me and my mom are heading over and, and we'll we'll tell her together. And she was like, yeah, yeah, okay. And then wow, she called me what a great grandma. Like, that's Maybe so, you have such an, and you're <laughs> such an exceptional human, but you have an exceptional family, oh, you. you know? I mean, that's that's yeah. awesome. A lot of people can't count on their people, right? I mean, right. That's, that's true. Wow. That's true. So she actually oh. ended up calling my mom as soon as I left her house <gasps> and telling her. <laughs> Stop it. Now I just take back what I said. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so she was, she was nervous about it and kind of frightened about what that meant for me. Okay. Um, but I would, I used to work with a, an organization that would feel the homeless every Friday in the city. And so mm -hmm. I would go to my grandmother's house every Friday prior because it didn't start till the evening and she lives kind of on the way. So I would see her every Friday and she would ask me almost every time, tell me again why you're not what I see on TV. <sighs> and we'd talk about it. And then the next Friday would come and she'd be like, okay, just explain one more time. I don't, I don't understand why they're bad guys, but you're not joining bad guys. And we talk wow. about it and we'd have a conversation and it was probably the fourth time of me coming to her house on a Friday before going to feed the homeless. And I'm sitting on the couch next to her. And of course she's watching the news. She's watching the news and they're saying terrible things. Right. And she held my hand. This is going to make me emotional. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, um, no, she held my hand and she said, I wish that they could see you and the other Muslims the way that I do, now that I know who you are and what you do, that yes. you're not them. And that the That's TV is lying, that they're oh. not, you guys are not the same. And it was so wonderful to me that I was like, wow, <laughs> she gets yes. it, she accepts me. And it was wonderful yes. because it was probably like only a year in. <laughs> Everybody else took their sweet time, but my grandma would try, actively try explain to me again why this is okay explain to me again how this is different until one day she just realized you're not what they've said yes it, what it really a a beautiful me. that's so powerful and it's so beautiful and and she did stay the path so maybe yeah. she wasn't ready that first day but she yeah. stayed with you and held your hand and and listened man if we could all do that right i mean Honestly, yeah. wow and 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 I think everyone would say you're not that person they're creating on the TV right. screen. Right. Like, you know, that's that's the whole that's the main point of us talking today. Like that's what I want to get at. That's what I want everybody to understand about each other and to lift each other up instead of tear each other down. Like mm -hmm. it's just there's so much beauty and love and and you know, someone really set on, on living their path and finding that connection to God. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just really important. And the fact that we don't all have to be the same to, to, to love each other. And, and, you know, like you said, you know, love doesn't always look the same, you right. know, it doesn't. So, oh my gosh, that's, that gives me the goosebumps. It's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Wow. That's incredible. Thank you. Yeah. Ugh. Okay. So, um, gosh, what would you say is the most, um, one of the most, you know what? I want to try something. I want to ask you something else first. <laughs> I think one of the things, um, that we've noticed, I think, just with all the division that we're experiencing, particularly here, but all over the world too, division between people. I mean, even kids eight and 10 years old, depression, anxiety is just skyrocketing. I mean, there is so much anger and, and dismissal of each other. And, um, you know, how, how does your faith, um, and I know you've talked about this a lot so far, but how does it view, you know, people of other faiths, people of, you know, kind of bridging those gaps? Um, you know, how do you, uh, you know, accept differences in, in people and, and, you know, yeah. How, what sure. is your kind of view on that? So I, um, 
I we talk about the other communities when we're at the mosque. Um, I know when there have been, specifically when there have been other attacks on mosques, like when the uh, Christchurch massacre came, um, the different situations that have happened where, um, you know, we'll get like a news blast from the mosque telling us like, hey, there was somebody uh, who came to a mosque and they're, you know, they're causing some trouble and just be on the lookout and, you know, be aware and, um, you know, we'll get phone calls about people basically threatening to, you know, to destroy our building just because we're Muslim or, you know, what have you. Um, and I think what's so important to me and so amazing to me is that when we have our our Friday prayers and sermons, um, they'll talk about like, don't forget that the church down the street, those are our brothers and sisters and we love them. And the where our our Jewish friends pray on the other side of the street, those are our brothers and sisters and we love them. And if people are coming to you with questions, answer their questions with with a smile and with a happy heart and to make sure that you know you're spreading that, that that's important to know that um, we know that those people that threaten us or those people who come and, and, and hurt us those are not Christians. Those are not our brothers and sisters. Those are people who have ulterior motives and, you know, what have you. Um, and I think that really builds a sense of community, not just within our mosque, but within our communities. That it's not just, it's not just the Muslims. That we do have other people that that we love and we care about, who love us and care about us as well. But a cutie pie. <laughs> she won't quit jumping on the platform, so I'm like, just get up here. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, oh I my god, you know, my sister, because I was like, I was like, you're gonna sit still. <laughs> <laughs> she always has to be on camera. <laughs> oh She's my god, her emotional support. That's um, yes. <laughs> so I really That's, think that yeah. a big part of what would help. Our, our youth especially, is that sense of community. I know that I started struggling with depression at a really young age as well. And that yep. a large a large part of that was just feeling alone. Yes. Um, feeling like you don't have people who understand or you don't have people who maybe care the way that you need them to care because you once you are in a state of depression, you need more than you know, a regular amount of care. You need extra to, to really help lift you out of that. And I think that remembering that we are all part of a community is helpful yes. to that. Um, I'm also part of a, a group of people who do interfaith work where we'll have, uh, you know, dinners or lunches and we always make sure to color coordinate. So if you're Muslim, you'll wear a certain color sticker. And so you have to follow that sticker pattern in your seat so that you're not sitting next to somebody who practices the way that you practice. And so you'll see me sitting next to a nun and then sitting next to, you know, a woman who practices Judaism and somebody else who practices Protestantism. And we're all sitting together knowing that we are a community and that that's important to us. And I think that that would really help the children especially to have that community. Um, yes. I know that the the mental illness, um, which is basically its own uh, its own pandemic, is you know yes. children children are um, dying by suicide every day. It's yes. it's horrible. Um, I know that there was that rise during uh, during lockdown, um, and children were doing e learning, and I think part of that as well is when I'm at school, I can see people every day and I'm not by myself. Right. And now during lockdown, they were by themselves all the time. And there were a lot of children who weren't lucky enough to have other siblings or a parent who was also able to work from home. And so they did spend right. a large chunk of time by themselves. Yes. Yes. And I don't think that that's something you are automatically healed from just by spending time at school. You know, yes. those, those are things that require more more work deeper work yes always every single day that is something that i have um i'm a therapist and i work with children and adolescents um mostly adolescents and um it is the 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 amount of 
increased statistically with anxiety and depression during the lockdown. You know, it took a bad situation and really made it worse. But, right. you know, I think the opportunity here coming out of it, you know, even though we are struggling right now with the wars and with so much animosity here in, in the country and so much struggle between people, but that sense of connection and supporting the sense of community with all of us is like one of the hugest things we can do. Absolutely. It's just looking somebody in the face and saying, okay, I hear you, I see you, you know, it's, it's, it's gonna be one of the things that's gonna shift this, this forward and out of where we are, you know, Absolutely. I feel, um, yeah, oh my gosh. Okay, so one before last thing, I know that was kind of a more, you know, a uh, uh, more difficult thing. My last thing is, what is the most happiest, most inspiring um, part of your spiritual practice? Something that just makes you super, super happy that Something you want to that share as we go out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, no more crying. <laughs> um, so I would say there are two things that make me super happy. Um, so again, Muslims pray five times a day. Um, we pray once before the sun rises. We pray in the afternoon. We pray, um, around later in the afternoon-ish, <laughs> around, uh, sundown and then in the evening. Um, and, um, our prayers are very regimented. Um, all of our, uh, positionings are the same every time, um, and um, some beautiful things about it is um, we talk a lot about, you know, um, the way that people are positioned in life. You're like your station in life where you are oftentimes has to do with where you are financially, what your money looks like, what your house looks like, those things. Um, but then when we look at the way that we pray, I could see a room of, let's say, five men. And one of the men is a um, someone who has no job. He's homeless. Um, the next person is a CEO. The next person is uh, a custodian, a custodial worker. Um, the next person's a teacher, a doctor, a dentist, what have you. It doesn't matter who those men are. If any of them want to lead the prayer, they can, and everybody else will fall in line behind them and pray. That, that it could be the homeless man who doesn't have what the CEO has, but if he's going to lead the prayer, he's going to lead the prayer. And I love that. I think that's so beautiful. Um, and then on top of that, we talk about how when you are in, um, there's a position called sujud, um, which is when you're on your knees and your face is to the ground. And we talk about how there's no, there's no time that you're closer to God than when you're in that position, you're in that position of prostration and you're basically, you are like physical embodiment of submission to God, you know, you're in, you're able to be in that position and kind of just pour your heart out and, you know, ask God for what you need to ask for, or, you know, be grateful for what you have to be grateful for. Um, and my second thing that I'm, uh, that makes me happy is a practice we call um, Zikr, which is uh, you are, it's kind of like meditating on God. So you may um, repeat phrases or words or anything like that, um, but it's just about God. And it's, um, you can do it, uh, I actually have some with beads. Uh, people might call them like oh, nice. rosary beads. <laughs> yes, right? I mean, uh, yes. So they have malas and they have rosary beads. Yes. And, and yes. So, I mean, there's so many similarities and that connection and, and mantras were kind of created with the same idea, I believe, is, is connection to God. That's the whole point of repeating and repeating and chanting, you know, right. is so, um, in so many cultures. Right, absolutely. And I really feel like um, what resonated with me was we. there's a, um, a verse in the Quran that talks about how um, in the remembrance of God, hearts will find rest. And that that's what, I mean, more or less, so like you're talking about the different types of beats so many of us are able to do where we have that remembrance of God and we're remembering and 
you're taking yourself out of your everyday or your mm -hmm. moments in time, you know, separating yourself and just remembering God. And you are absolutely able to find that rest and you're able to find that that recharge that you needed to really yes. get through your next moment because you may be having a particularly difficult day or what have you. And I really, that's something I really love. Yes, that is something I, so I was um, in the drive through at Starbucks. I know that sounds really random, but these girls had just gotten off the shift and they knelt down in the ice and snow and did their prayers right there because it was wow. five o'clock. And, and, and they, you know, threw a towel down and they just had their foreheads. And I thought, oh, my God, to give you that moment in time to take a breath, to connect with God. To, I mean, it just must take you to just a different place, like, the, you know, for praying for, for all of us, you know. I mean, it just but but taking that moment in time and just connecting, I would imagine changes your latitude. I know it does for me when I pray. Yeah. Yeah. It just pulls you out and refocuses you. And says you're you, like you said you can take the next step, right? Absolutely. Wow! I always I was like, oh my god, that's so beautiful. I didn't want to interrupt them or you know, but I thought, oh my god, that just made my day. <laughs> it was so beautiful. So okay, yeah, that's wonderful. Oh my gosh, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here for thank sharing you for this. Me. Oh my god, I'm so inspired. I'm so inspired to keep going, and I'm so grateful for you. Oh, I'm grateful for you too. And I'm grateful to be a part of this. This was wonderful. Yes, yes. on we go. Yes. <laughs> I just, yeah, I just am excited about the possibility of just everybody sharing and coming together. So Absolutely, yeah. Yes. I look forward to watching your, your next one. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay, all right. I'm going to stop us for a minute. And... Okay, thank you everybody for being here today.